you here with us on tonight. At this time, if you would, I would like for you to bow with me in a word of prayer as we invite God into our presence and asking him to give us teaching power on tonight that he might receive the glory. Let's bow together and let's pray. God, our Father, we come in the most holy and righteous name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for this day and all blessings of life. We thank you for health and strength we thank you for grace and for your mercy. Father, we are humbled by your loving forgiveness, Father. We're thankful for the Church of Christ, that ship of Zion, that lead men or carry men's heart from earth to glory. Uh, Father, we are praying tonight uh, for Sister uh, Dolly and Brother Ramesh. Father, as they uh, participate and join in to a summer vacation uh, Bible studies there in Miami. It will be away from us for a couple of weeks. Father, we're praying uh, that you will enhance their wisdom and knowledge, and that they will use their gifts and their talents to share and to bring about uh, a blessing to those uh, at the Sunset Church of Christ there. Father, we're praying for Leonard Ziegler, uh, who has come in contact with COVID-19. Father, we're asking you to touch heal his body, and preserve his life. We're praying for brother and sister Emmons, Father, for complete healing, asking that you touch and heal their bodies, especially sister Nancy, Father, praying that you will bless them with a new home and a new ministry that they may serve you, uh, Father, uh, in spirit and in truth. And now, Father, we're praying for the sick and the afflicted everywhere, that you will bless them, Lord, touch and heal their bodies, praying for world peace, Father, and repentance. Now, Father, we're praying concerning our study on tonight, asking you to help me recollect the things that I've studied. Use my mind, my eyes, and my mouth to work in harmony, Father, that I may speak clearly only your word, not my thoughts, not my understanding, but your word as it is given and written and revealed by the apostles, uh, that you might receive all glory tonight, uh, that some lost soul may, perhaps may be saved, the saved may be edified, Satan terrified, and the man of God encouraged. This is my prayer now, Father. I ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen. All right, we're going to get started uh, going right to question number eight on tonight. We are still in lesson seven. God's peace through inheritance in Christ. God's peace through inheritance in Christ. Uh, and we're starting at verse question, uh, question number eight, excuse me, question number eight on tonight. Uh, and of course, this question number eight is in, uh, it, as in relation or it relates to our contextual reading of Colossians chapter three. Uh, particularly verse 12, Colossians chapter 3, and particularly verse number 12. The question that's posed to the class tonight is, what do traits such as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience say to other people? What do these traits, such as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience say to other people? And how do these traits foster peace between people? All right. Um, who wants to join in this, uh, this evening? Uh, this light is shining through my window, and I keep wanting to say this morning, because <laughs> we have longer days now. But this evening, who wants to join in? Who wants to give me an answer to this question? Uh, I have a lot to share, but I want to get some feedback here before I get into my dissertation here. Uh, anybody? Not everybody at one time. Don't be shy. I know you've been faithful in your homework, so come on and talk to me. What does these traits of compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, what does these say to other people when they see these traits in you, the child of God? Anybody? Uh, one that 
one that we're all human, that we can, uh, we're all in a position of need of these different qualities because when we, when people see those type of qualities in us, they also see that you care, that you're, you're part of the human race and that you're, you're not um, uh, always critical or you're not as critical as uh, people of the world may be, but we, we have that peace of God because we've given these same uh, attributes from God and they are a blessing to us, but we also, there are attributes that we can share with others around us. Thank you, Brother Spence. Thank you so much. And Brother Anyone Miles, else? And Albo. Yes, ma'am. They help us, they help others to see uh, that we are God's chosen people because we are different. These traits help us to be completely different from the world standards. So it helps them, it helps us to see God uh, in us. And I know sometimes, you know, people look at it. We can still, you know, have peace and then they just know that it's something totally different than what the world, what the world is. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Satcher. Thank you, Brother Spence. One more, one more. Anybody else? Uh, Brother Miles, uh, when I think about yes. these different traits, I, yes, I think about the relationships. I think about the relationships that we built with people and the relationships that we built uh, with God, our per especially our personal relationships. Very good, very good, amen. Let me give you what I got um, on this question. What does these uh, traits of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience say to others uh, when they see these? First of all, the aforementioned attributes, these attributes and characteristics display positive actions. They display positive actions. In other words, they bring about positive benefits. When we are compassionate, when we uh, try to have understanding uh, with others and what perhaps they're going through or facing, when we do kind deeds, when we do deeds of compassion, that's kindness. Uh, when we handle people uh, in gentle ways, um, when we humble ourselves and put ourselves on the level with others. And then, Lord have mercy, I don't know about you all, but today I was handling some business for my elderly mother, and I tell you, I had to summons all the patience that was in, within me, Sister Veronica. I had to summons every ounce of patience being on the phone for an, a complete hour before I even got to the department that I really needed to talk to. And then when we got to that department, I asked for future reference, is there a direct number? And of course there was not. When we must summon these characteristics, these traits, uh, because these traits bring about a positive action not only for us and in our lives, but those we are interacting with, and watch this, watch this domino effect, and also those who are around us. Have you ever been in a grocery store, or have you ever been on your job particularly, or in your community, and you happen to come upon a situation that was not so kind, or a situation that could have really gotten out of hand and caused some serious harm, or yet even death? But because of your interaction, by you bringing compassion and kindness, maybe you had to humble yourself when someone was talking to you in a nasty and derogatory way. Uh, you had to speak to them in a gentle way. And, and, and somebody around you, not only that person that brought themselves down because of how you showed and displayed these traits, but then the person around you probably met you after the situation over and say, listen, I just want to tell you, Oh my goodness, 
that was so wonderful what you did. You, oh my God, you really helped me today to see you act that way or how you handled that store clerk or how you handled uh, that, that uh, co-worker when they were going off. These traits, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, brings about positive actions. And then they bring about a positive benefit. Uh, you have heard me say many times, even as uh, often as uh, as late as this past Sunday, you've heard me say to us many times that God, Jesus, and the apostles are our spiritual examples. Yes, you may have had wonderful parents. God bless you. You may have had wonderful siblings and wonderful grandparents. God bless you. But, but God, Jesus, and the apostles are our spiritual examples. And it is clear, beloved, that through and by evidence in our text of consideration that Paul is referring or inferring, excuse me, and suggesting that these traits or these characteristics are those which are of God and which are of Christ. These characteristics are of God and of Christ. Beloved, come walk with me now, back to verse number one of Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, come with me now to verse number one. And I'm gonna read it from the New Living Translation where Paul says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, here it is, set your sights. And you need to mark this because I'm gonna come back to this later on, um, uh, perhaps down in verse number 10. I mean, question number 10, I'll come back to this. But listen to what he says here, set your sights, underline that word sight, uh, on the realities of heaven. Uh, King James says uh, 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 to, to look that way or to, to view that way. He says, set your sights on the reality of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Here's the point, beloved. Here's the point. Paul is clearly suggesting to us tonight, Sister Miles, that our attention, that our eyes should be focused on Jesus. Watch this. Our attention, our eyes should be focused on Jesus. Now, hold on to that. Hold on to that because he says in verse number two, he says, Think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. King James says, set your affections, set your affection on things above. So Paul is now saying not only, Sister Satcher, not only should we keep our eyes on Jesus, but he now says to keep our mind on Jesus. Now, the question then becomes, for what? Why is this apostle suggesting to us to keep our eyes on Jesus and to keep our mind on Jesus? It's right here in the sacred text. It's right here in the sacred text. Season saints, look again at verse number three. Look at verse number three. He says, for you died, New Living Translation, for you died to this life, and your real life, now here it is. I almost shouted when I got to this, brother, brother Spence. I almost shouted when I got to this part. He says, your real life is hidden. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I the only one about to shout about this, Sister Connie? He says, your real life is hidden with Christ in God. I wish I had two people who would just type this in the chat. He covered me. Yeah, yeah, he covered me. Great God Almighty. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting happy right here, Marcus. You see, you got to see it like I see it, church. Listen, because Jesus covered me, all right? When I went through that watery grave of baptism and my sins was washed away and I rose as a new creature in Christ, he covered me, Sister Youngblood. And when he covered me, that means God could not see me. He sees the blood, the cleansing power blood of his son. When God, when Jesus covered me, he covered all of my lies. 
He covered, now don't you look at me like you don't tell no lies now. He covered all of my lies, Sister Martha. He covered all of my mistakes, uh, Sister Desiree. He covered all of my fumbles. He covered all of my falls. And, and, so, and so that's why Paul says we should keep our eyes on Christ. We should keep our mind on Christ because it's because of Christ that we have been covered. We have been covered, and it's because of Christ that we have now risen uh, as a new creature, as a new creature. Now, listen to verse four before I pause for any questions or any comments. Listen to verse number four. He says in verse four, and when Christ, who is your life, watch that, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So it is clear that Paul is saying that when our eyes and when our minds are stayed and focused on Jesus, Sister Roche, uh, our observance of his life and our observance of his position we should embody the aforementioned attributes and characteristics of Christ so that when folks see our kindness, here it is, Sister Satcher, this is what you were saying, so that when folks see kindness, when they see our humility, when they see our gentleness, uh, uh, when they see uh, our patience, uh, Brother John, uh, when they see these characteristics and traits within you, guess what, beloved? They are not really seeing you. They're seeing the Jesus that's inside of you. <laughs> How I know that's true? How I know that's true? Because remember, without Christ, Paul said, when God found us, when Christ's grace and mercy found us, we were dead in our sins. We were ungodly. We were unworthy. We were sinners on our way to a burning hell. There is no good in the flesh with the absence of God. That's how I know when we, when we possess these uh, true attributes, I'm telling you, that's the Jesus that's inside of us. It's the Jesus inside of us. Any comments or any questions before I move on? Any comments or any questions? Brother Miles. Yes, ma'am. So I think you made it very clear that in accepting Christ, it changes our moral and ethical, ethical behavior because we have Christ living in us so that he can shape us the way he wants us to be. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, and we so, know it's him that's shaping us, Sister Connie. Uh, I didn't cut you off, did I? No, not really. But I was okay. just saying we have and to I, set and we, our hearts and minds on what's above us yes, in the sir. heavenly yes, kingdom and not what is temporary, what is not what is temporal, no matter how important it may seem. Yes, ma'am. We have to stay focused yes, on yes, God. Christ and the Holy Spirit. That, that's right. That's right. And I know that it's his, his presence in us that's shaping us because Paul said in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we know the word uh, is Jesus because in John 1 and 14 says the word became flesh and lived among us. So when we talk about the word, we're talking about God. The word of God is God breathed. It is, it is the presence of God in, in the Holy Scripture. So it is the Scripture, the Word of God, that gives us our faith, that shapes who we are as Christians, because it is our faith. If it's not of God, Paul says, if it's not of God, it is sin. So we know that it's God in us through his Word, as well as the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to his followers. It, it shapes us. Uh, and causes us to be 
and to have these characteristics, traits, and attributes. Now, can I look a little further? Brother, can I look a little further? Look again. Somebody said something? Yeah, br Brother Miles, you know, you know what's what's interesting about what you're saying is sometimes you will exhibit these traits and somebody will say, Well, thank you. You know, and what I'm really thinking is I did this for you, but I didn't do it because of you. I did it uh -oh. because uh -oh. of God, not because of you. Because if I get into, you know, then I'm making the choice based on the way I feel, you know, you know, whether I feel like you earned it or or whatever, which is a dangerous game to play will have me all over the place as I mature. I understand that it's, it's, it's about God because that's what he would want me to do. And, and loving you is, is loving him. And that's ultimately what I want to do is please him. And by doing all of these things, I please him. And that keeps me more consistent. Otherwise, if it's based on me, it's all in how I feel you know, about, about you, about the situation, about these things, you know, and all of that. So I'm, I'm much better when I focus on God and what he wants and understands that everything else is, is you know, is, is, is going to fall apart anyway if I don't please him. Well said, Brother Johnson. Well said. Thank you. Anyone else? Look at the latter part of verse number four with me. Look at, look at the latter part of verse number four, because I see something else here to shout about, Brother, Brother Spence. I see something else to shout about here. Look at verse the, 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 the latter part of verse number four. Uh, Paul says that if we stay focused on Jesus, watch this, with intent to be like Jesus, here, is, here it is, he shall, shall also appear with Christ in glory, in glory. We shall appear with Christ in glory. Another translation said, you will share in all his glory. But, but the Bible says that we shall appear. King James says, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Underline that word glory. If you're taking notes, write it down. That word glory, now this is a shouting point for those of you uh, who, who, who really love the Lord and, and really understand who you were without the Lord. And, and, and who you are now with the Lord, amen, somebody. Uh, the word glory there, the strong reference number is 1391. For those who want to go back and look at it, 1391 is the strong reference number uh, for this word glory. And you all heard us talk about it before, doxa, D-O-X-A. D-O-X-A is the word, doxa. And, 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 and in, in the most uh, general sense, uh, the word glory here uh, suggests opinion, opinion. And when used and appear in the New Testament, it's always an opinion of good. It's always in the New Testament, the word doxa, glory, is always an opinion of good. It also refers, Sister Veronica, to praise and to honor, to praise and to honor. Uh, Brother Marcus, here, uh, it is an especially divine quality. It's an especially divine quality. Uh, matter of fact, it is the unspoken manifestation of God and splendor. That's what glory is. Paul says that if we stay focused, it's clear that we should uh, take uh, that we should take on and possess and display these characteristics of Christ. Why? Because if we hold on to these characteristics, if these attributes are a part of our daily living, they have become a part of who we are. Listen, we then manifest the very splendor of God. That's what glory is. It's what you're known for. It's part of your reputation. It represents the essence of the person and who they are. I, I think I'm the only one getting excited tonight. Listen, listen, listen. Have you ever been called derogatory names? 
Uh, somebody called you something nasty. Now you got to keep it real. Now I'm not asking you to answer out loud tonight, but I'm I'm, I'm going to give you a, 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 this is an honorable question. Now you, it's going to take you to be honest with yourself. Have anybody ever called you a derogatory name? Called you a a, a, a nasty person, a nasty name, uh, and and uh, for the moment, in the heat of the moment, you got angry about it. You you probably even got indignant about it, and in some cases. If you be honest, you probably even got into a fight about it. Um, uh, but then in the crucible of your quietness, you know that person called you that name because of how you were acting, speaking, or behaving. <laughs> they called you a liar because they caught you in a lie. <laughs> They, 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 they called you a, a blank starter because that's what you were doing. Ain't nobody going to help me in here tonight. Somebody needs to just type in the text. Keep it real, Brother Miles. Keep it real. 100, no caps. Listen, but when we possess and display these characteristics of God, it is clear that individuals will see the God that's inside of us. Brother Johnson made a powerful statement and, I, and I've shared this with my wife not long ago because <laughs> you know, preachers get frustrated too. Preachers get worn out too. Preachers get ready to, to throw up their hands too. Everything I do as a minister, everything I do as a brother of Christ is because of the God that's inside of me. I cannot take credit. Matter of fact, Paul made that clear. We can't boast as if we've done something. You know, when he was talking to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter three, he talks about, uh, look, listen, I ain't nobody. Paul said, I'm nobody. You know, I planted Apollos watered, but it was God almighty who gave the increase. Everything we do as a child of God, every attribute we display of goodness and every comment or compliment we receive is because of the God that's inside of us. Because we're just one baptism away. We're just one confession away. One uh, repentance of our sin away from on our way to hell. Man cannot make it spiritually without God. He cannot do it. It is impossible to do it. So he says to us, keep our eyes, keep our mind on, on God, on things above, because it is then that we will have our, the perfect example before us uh, and the perfect motivation. And I'm gonna get to that in, in question 10 down the road. But we'll have the perfect motivation in front of us as well. Any other comments? Any other questions? All right. If not, not let's move to question number nine. Yes, sir. Brother Spence. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Um, um, when you really look at it, we're, we're like we're almost skating on ice you know i mean we're like a quarter of an inch thickness of ice and anything could bring us down at any second but it's just i mean i've been in situations like that before you like to go the other way with some of this stuff sometimes but it just shows us how important it is for us uh, every day to look at life as an opportunity to help somebody to show God's goodness. And we don't always do that. I don't always do that, but I tell you, you gotta be on your guard all the time because you don't wanna um, get yourself in a situation where you're not helping people. You're not giving your best. So it's just like walking on ice, you know, and you know, one false move could get you, get you under, you know, but praise be to God that he will <laughs> lift us up. I know you're right. I know you're right. Anyone else? 
All right. Let's move, let's move to question number nine, the A part. The A part of question number nine. How does forgiveness foster peace within our hearts? How does forgiveness foster peace within our hearts? Anyone want to take a shot at that? How does forgiveness foster peace within our hearts? Brother Miles. Brother Miles. <laughs> you go yes. ahead, Sister Miles. <laughs> you go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Miles. Miles. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, when you when you have peace. You, you just feel, uh, well, I know I do. It removes the heavy weight of, um, of things that are going on. It just, you feel lighter and any kind of, um, uh, I don't know, resentment, a wall or possibly something that you've uh, built up um, because of something that happened, you know, the peace allows you to be able to um, go beyond, you know, that wall or or the barrier is, is what I had in, in for my answer. All right. Look like you, you looked over my shoulder for that first part of your answer, but I know you didn't because we're in two different places. <laughs> Great job. You don't tell Miles. me Thank anything. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Miles. Sister Connie. Just speaking from my own life experience, and I'm speaking about me. I am a person, even as a believer, that tends to hold grudges and um, has been told that I have an unforgiving spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And mercy. But some of that from my experience, it's a choice I made or a decision I made. I was able to get past that by talking with the person and letting them know that I was the one at fault in the sense that I couldn't stop thinking about it. It came up all the time. And even though I could see the other person had gotten past it, it was hard for me to do it. And I'm just being honest, and I love when Marcus says, be transparent about yes. myself. But once I went through the process of saying, I can't continue to do this, when I see and realize and acknowledge how many times God has forgiven me and how many times I yes. looked at that scripture in Matthew where it talks about forgiving 70 times 70 or infinitely. Every day you're going to think, say, do, act, or feel in some way that falls short of God's standard, at least myself. And so I said, every time I ask God to be forgiven and repent, God will forgive me. If I asked earnestly and sincerely, so I have to feel this way toward other human beings and not their yes. grudges and not have an unforgiving spirit because that, I don't care how much I go to church and how much I pray and read scripture, if I do not throw that out of my life, out of my personality, out of my Christian <laughs> Christianity, then what good is all this doing me? Yes. Yes, and I thank you, Sister Connie, for that transparency as well. I thank you because when we're transparent, we help others to see that the struggle is real. The struggle is real, but we also, with a with a wonderful ending to the the transparency, help them to see how God can help us to overcome those struggles. Uh, but they are real. They are real, even in the life of the Christian. Uh, Sister Martha Evans, you we, you know I'm happy to have you with us. You know I don't get to see you all the time and hear you all the time. 
I know you got something on this. How does forgiveness foster peace within our hearts? Thank you. Talk to me, Sister Evans. You know, um, in listening to everyone's comments, I can so relate to all of that. But I remember as a kid growing up, whenever we would do something that we weren't supposed to be doing to other siblings, and of course I was a baby, so I thought I could get away with a whole lot. Um, (laughs) Something my mother would always say after the disciplinary process, (laughs) i.e. your (laughs) wedding, is that, you know, you, you have to forgive because God is a forgiving God. She would always yes. say that and that you need to remember to treat others as, as you want to be treated, but you cannot go through life holding grudges if you expect to find your way to the kingdom. And so for yes. me, you know, that struggle is always real with me. Um, in my daily living. And I can also share with you that um, I went through, you know, some major uh, situations whereby Brother Miles, uh, and this was, you know, a few years back, was able to help me through um, a situation where I needed to forgive. And so, you know, as you mentioned, the struggle is real, but I think it's important to know that forgiveness is you know, it's a part of our toolbox, you know, it helps you in the healing process. Because if you if you don't go through that process, then you're going to be stressed out all the time, you're never going to have inner peace, you just it's just never going to happen. And so we have to understand what that means when it comes to uh, being godlike. Um, Forgiveness is, is key. It's important. Um, for us, because it brings peace rather than revenge. Thank you, Sister Evans. Thank you so much. Sister Veronica Woods, my dear sister, I'm have, I, I have so good to have you with us tonight. You have anything you want to share uh, on how does forgiveness foster peace within our hearts when we forgive? Well, I was looking up something, um, and it says allowing hatred or resentment Allowing that to be in your head or in your heart is allowing that person to live rent free in your head. And so wow. that's something that you got to think about because when you hold on to that stuff, you know, those folks are going on about their lives. They're not waiting on you, but you're giving Absolutely. them space and time in your head and, and, and anxiety and everything else. So that's filling that. But when you learn how to forgive, you have peace and you don't have to worry about anything else. You just keep on and God wants us to forgive because in order for us, for him to forgive us, we have to forgive others. So yes. in Colossians 13, uh, 3 and 13, that's what it stated. It says, um, <laughs> bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So that's something yes. that I just try to keep in mind. I, I had posted it a long time on Facebook about letting somebody live rent free in your head. Just always think about that. Do I want to give that person space in my space and time in my head because for nothing? Yes, powerful. Thank you, Sister Woods. Thank you. And that's so true. It's so true. And I've shared that with my children ever since they was old enough to, con- to comprehend is that most people, and, and, and I hate to say this, but I, I need you all to get this as I, I prepare to close. And I won't even get into my dissertation on this because it's so much I want to give you. And Sister Woods already took one of my scriptures and God bless you. But listen, listen, most people, not let me let me back up. Not most people. Some people who have offended you, that's what they had set out to do. Not all, not all, and I won't even say most, but there are some individuals who are sons and daughters of Satan. And their goal was to offend you. Their goal was to hurt you. And and here's what you don't want to allow. Sister Sister Woods used the term of rent-free, having free space. That's very true. But what you also don't want to allow, you don't want to allow someone else to paralyze you 
mentally and emotionally, and they're shoe shining the boogie going on about their business, living it up over in Cancun, having a good time, drinking it up, turning it up, shaking it up, and you are paralyzed. Your, your, your home is affected. Your health is affected. Your motherhood or fatherhood is, is, is affected. You're paralyzed in your spousal relationship. You're paralyzed spiritually. You come to church, you, the message is being preached, but you hear nothing because you're sitting there with tight jaws, red eyes, about to have a heart attack or have an embolism because you are you have been paralyzed by the actions of someone else. Let me tell you simply, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Forgiveness is for freedom of yourself and not the other person because they're not in bondage. They are not in bondage. Freedom of, of forgiveness, and this one even in my notes, y'all just triggered this. Forgiveness is promotes freedom in the individual who's giving or offering the forgiveness because what it will do you are in trouble, and I'm going to give this to you two weeks from now, and I'm going to tell you why two weeks from now in just a moment. You are in trouble carnally, and you are in trouble spiritually when you do not forgive. You are facing physical, mental, and emotional distress, and you are also facing spiritual distress. When you do that not, is not so true. forgive. All right. That is so, true. so we but now. must forgive. We must forgive. All right. We must forgive. All right. So, Faye, you want to say something and then we're going to have to close it out. Uh, yeah. About the forgiveness. Um, I know Sister Mal knows about, about me in this situation, but I was terminated from my job after. They found out that I have MS, so they terminated me un, unruly. I put it that way. <clears throat> and then my husband that I'm trying to just divorce right now, he left me. And I got a paperwork that's from a judge that says that I'm indigent. You know, an indigent person is on the phone, on the streets and stuff, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So. I, I forgive them, Methodist, what they did, and I also forgive my soon-to-be ex-husband. You know, I I forgive them, and I uh, uh, that's about it. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Well, Sister Faye, thank you so much, and and I'm glad you 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 think that that was short, but it was also powerful because being dismissed from a career that you had given years to faithfully. And being dismissed uh, from a marriage that you were devoted to um, could cause all kinds of hatred. So we thank you. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Um, boy, there's so much more I want to share with y'all, but I, I just can't get to. Let me give you some reading homework. Let me give you some reading homework. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 24. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 24. That's part of our text here. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. We're just going to mention that to prove a point. Ephesians 1, 22, 23. Also, 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 10, we'll also just hit that to prove a point, to show up a point. We're going to reference and go back to uh, verse 15 of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. I'm going to go back there. Also, we're going to look at again, I told you earlier today, we're going to look at again, Colossians 3, 1 through 4, just to make a reference, particularly verse 1 and 2, all right? So you might want to look at that again and just study on that a little bit. All right, that's all the homework assignment I'm going to give you for reading. Um, again, thank you. God bless you.
your takeaway, your takeaway, remember God, Jesus, the apostles, they are our examples. They are our examples. Um, uh, no matter what kind of parents we've had in our past, uh, they may have been great Christian folk. I know I did. I had some great examples in front of me, all right? But they are our examples. When we um, uh, embody these attributes that we talked about earlier, uh, compassion, kindness, humility, we are exemplifying Christ. Uh, when he died for us and covered us, he covered all of our sins, all of our mistakes, all of our ill-willed characteristics, and he covered us. And now uh, through the word, through the baptism of cleansing and through the word brought about a, a new faith, a new person. And, and, and those are the attributes that we need uh, to share, that we need to share, uh, okay? And, and then of course, when we do that, uh, we share in, in, in the Lord's glory, uh, we share uh, in his uh, divine manifestation. Uh, when people see us, they see the Lord. They see the Lord. Then, of course, we'll get further into forgiveness and, and how uh, it fosters peace within our hearts. Uh, Sister Miles, do you have any announcements? Yes, uh, just a reminder of the ladies' devotion and prayer call uh, tomorrow night at 630 and to please invite another lady to join. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Miles. Thank you. Uh, any of our leaders, any announcements from any of our leaders? Uh, no, not at this time for me. No, sir. All right. All right. Um, Brother Marcus, you can go ahead and put that, that uh, share your screen. On next Wednesday, you all heard me say two weeks from now that we'll be back. On next Wednesday, I've been invited by the Roswell Church of Christ in Kansas City uh, to be a guest speaker on one of their uh, nights of their summer uh, series, their summer series. Uh, this is the information. We're going to leave it up for you guys to write down that, that Zoom ID number and the passcode. Um, for those who may not be able to see it, it's 913-621-0435. This is the meeting ID Zoom number for the Roswell Church of Christ for next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, Can we, you give our, that again? We are not canceling class. I will, just a moment. We're not canceling class. Uh, we are transferring uh, and joining in with the Roswell Church of Christ, where your minister, myself, will be the guest speaker there. Uh, you might get out a little early because they told me I got about 20 or 25 minutes, but they're going to give room for some questions and things of that nature. Uh, but the ID meeting number for the Zoom is 913-621-0435. Again, 913 six two one zero four three five if you're on a phone uh, or an ipad and know how to do a snapshot uh push your home button and the turn on button at the same time and you can take a snapshot of this and save it for yourself the passcode is twenty nine hundred two nine zero zero again that passcode is two nine zero zero all right I'm grateful to be, uh, have been asked to be a part of this summer series. Uh, Dr. Artrell is an awesome man of God, a great preacher, great evangelist. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm pleased and thankful uh, that he thought enough of me uh, to invite me to be a part of their uh, summer series revival. Um, and um, I tell you, he's a fine, uh, fine preacher. Uh, and so we're thankful for the invitation. All right, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. Please, let's remember um, Zayden, uh, Sister Iris Cannon's uh, grandson. There are some children uh, that has uh, been affected in his class. 
And so we want to pray that those children that are sick uh, will be healed and also praying that Zayden, uh, God will cover him and protect him as well. Remember the Emmons family in your prayers for healing for Sister Nancy uh, and a blessing for uh, a new ministry that they are seeking. Also, Brother Leonard Ziegler, Ziegler uh, has COVID-19. Let's remember him in our prayers as well. At this time, would you bow with me now uh, as we pray? Uh, and then we will ask you to unmute yourselves and have fellowship one with another. God, our Father, we come again in the righteous and holy name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, thanking you, Lord, for this day and all blessings of life. Father, it is our sincere prayer now that you will bless the word that have gone out tonight, that it will find a resting place in the hearts of those who have received it, and that it will germinate and bring about a great harvest of obedience and understanding. Father, we're praying again for Dolly and Ramesh that you will bless them, Father, that they will be a great attribute and that they will not only be able to give, but also receive from the summer vacation Bible studies uh, with the Sunset Church of Christ. Father, we're praying for Brother Ziegler, Father, that you will touch and heal his body and preserve his life. Bless Sister Emmons and Brother Carlos with health strength, protection, and provision, Father. Bless them with a new home. Bless them with a new ministry. We're praying for Zayden, Father, and also for Marcus, his father, for healing, for protection. Father, ask you to preserve their lives and heal their bodies, Lord. We're praying, Father, um, that when it's yours to call and ours to answer, we will um, experience a peaceful hour in death, hearing you say, well done, my good and faithful servant, on the other side of this life. This is our prayer now. We ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, let us all say amen.